Hey guys, it's Kat and I am back today for an early edition of Project Armageddon, which is my eyeshadow palette Armageddon series. I'm going to use the majority of my eyeshadow palettes this year and then check back at the end of the month, let you know what I thought about the palettes that I was focusing on, looks I created and whether or not I'm keeping them. Now this month being February and being a shorter month, I decided to not overdo it and focus on my Pat McGrath collection. I have six eyeshadow palettes. I did have another one in this sort of format, but I decluttered it uh, when I moved house because I just never used it. Even though six eyeshadows isn't too many to go through this month, um, I really want to test out this range and get a really firm, good idea about whether or not I want to keep them because I have had issues with these in the past and because they're so expensive and because people rave about Pat McGrath eyeshadow so much, I thought I'll dedicate a whole month to testing these and I'll really finally decide if I want to keep them or not because these have been kicking around my house for years now and I just have been struggling parting with them because they are so expensive. Um, now I can tell you that I'm filming this on the 16th of February. This is going to be a two-parter episode so uh, I'll explain that a bit more a bit later on in this video but the reason I didn't even make it to day 28 is because I've decided that I don't like these. Now, people are gonna come for me and whenever I talk about these palettes on my channel, the Pat McGrath stands come out of the woodworks. You don't know how to use them because you're not a professional, they're for professionals. Uh, why do you have so many if you hate it? You clearly love it secretly. You're just an amateur. Like, I get it, I get it. I've been using makeup for 20 years. Yes, I am an amateur because I haven't been officially trained in makeup application, but I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I've tried so many eyeshadows from so many brands and these just aren't that impressive. Okay, why do I have six of these? The answer is a stupid one, but it is, it is, I'll just tell you anyway. Um, so I bought one of these full price. I was so excited. They're around 200 Australian dollars. Uh, I got the bronze seduction one uh, when it first came out. I ordered it from the Pat McGrath website, paid 200 bucks for it um, because I thought this is a color story that I can wear every day. I was really excited to try the formula. I did a review and I did a review over, I think it was about a week or something. Um, I'll link it down below if you want to see it. And even though I was really excited to use it at the start, I think what I sort of developed over that week testing it is I realized that these aren't worth the $200. I feel like you're spending your money on the packaging, on the name, um, on the giant mirror that's like, like, embo no, it's like beveled, got beveled edges. Like there's a lot of, this is like the equivalent of a designer handbag. Um, it's just a handbag, but the name and the, the quality of the packaging is what makes this. It's not so much the function of it, in my opinion. But in response to that review that I did, I did have a few people say things like, I've got the other palettes and they're really good. So maybe the bronze seduction just wasn't that great. So this is how I got this many, right? All right, it's gonna sound crazy, but Sephora Australia was having an up to 50% off sale. It was early in the year, a few years ago. Um, and <laughs> what they accidentally did, instead of making a selection of products 50% off, they made the whole website 50% off. So when I found out about that, and it was, it was only for a short period of time, Haley and I decided to order a bunch of these because we were both unsure about the bronze seduction and we weren't like, we're like, is it just the palette that we didn't like? Are the rest of them really great? So if there were any that sort of piqued our interest in the color stories, we ended up adding them to our cart because they were 50% off. And also we didn't think the order was gonna go through. Since it was a website glitch, it's happened before on, Austra on a Sephora Australia, often they'll refund the money and cancel the order. So we just placed, I think we placed two orders. Like I think I placed an order for this and an order for these, hoping that one of them will go through. They ended up both going through. So I got these 50% off, but I can tell you, I still regret spending the money on these because even at 50% off, I don't think these are that great. Just putting it out there. So that's how I've ended up with so many of them. And over the past few years, I occasionally bring them out and I sort of like force myself to use it 
to try to get use out of them and to convince myself that I like the formula. What ends up happening is I don't really like the effect it gives. I don't really like the application. I don't really like the formula and I end up putting them away and forgetting about them for another six months or something. So this time around, that's not going to happen. I'm not putting these back in my collection, but I do have a sort of thing that I want to play with and try to do um, at the end of this, which will be part two, but I'll go through each palette and I'll tell you what I like about it, what I dislike about it, and all that kind of jazz. All right, so we'll start with the Bronze Seduction. It was my first palette. It is the color story that I vibe with the most. One thing I find a little bit frustrating about the Pat McGrath palettes, not only is there excess expense and bulk in the packaging, these are very heavy. Um, they do claim to be like makeup artist quality products, but in reality, a makeup artist would never put this in their kit. Uh, it's too heavy. It's like a brick. Um, they're that you can't just depot them easily. Other brands that uh, claim to be a makeup artist brand, Makeup Forever, Viseart, even Natasha Denona, all the pans are removable. So you can take them out, you can play around, you can essentially, if you had all 30 shades in here, you can take them all out and customize your own palettes. You could do that. Pat McGrath, you can't. So I just think these are like designer consumer products. In terms of quality, I think where Pat McGrath keeps getting people interested is they put what we in the beauty community refer to as special shades. These are shades that either have really pretty sort of sparkly effects or duo chrome shifts or multi chrome shifts. Um, and generally you get uh, six normal eyeshadows and four special shades. Those are the things that keep people interested because when they swatch them in the store, they're like, oh, it's sparkly, it's beautiful. Um, and that's what makes people sort of fork over the money the majority of the time. Now, don't get me wrong. These are pretty shades and like this rose gold, it's a really beautiful, what I call everyday sparkle. So it's one that if you just put it on just a normal base, it gives a really beautiful shimmery effect, but it's quite nude. It's not too... Uh, vibrant. It's a nice everyday sparkle shade. This one here is a bit more chunky um, and that's a duochrome. So it goes sort of green to pink. Um, and again, I've got like lip swatches on my hands. That one looks a lot more vibrant. So you can see it's more of a vibrant topper. This one down here looks white, but it is more of a gold. Uh, this one is a lot more chunky. I did wear this um, in a look and it looked really almost like I put craft glitter on my eyes. So I don't think, even though they're pretty to swatch and they're nice, I don't actually think they're as refined as I would like for this uh, price range, if that makes sense. The one shade that I probably like the most is this metallic red. It's a different formula. It's almost like, a, I think they call them like jelly, um, almost like baked. It's like a baked gel that turns into this like, jelly type thing and it's this beautiful metallic shimmery red that's a really beautiful shade and it really can add a nice little pop to a look like i wouldn't use it all over my lid but when i was testing this out i did put it on my lower lash line a little bit and it created a really nice uh vibrant red effect um that i think is really really beautiful so this is what gets people interested the rest is pretty lackluster there is a sort of light champagne shimmer it is just a standard pretty boring shimmer there's like i feel like urban decay does better ones you have three mattes here they're all quite dark so they do create a smoky effect i like the shades they're browns and a plum but again there's nothing really to write home about they're a little bit patchy um, i think they have dried out a little bit since i bought this because when i first bought it i did quite like the mattes but i feel like over time they're getting worse and worse um, then you have this sort of dark gray it's like a shimmer but it's quite chunky it's like almost like it's got glitter in it but not quite but it's quite dark and you do have this um rough bronze which i love the color of it but it almost does have like a sandy feel to it. Again, it sort of feels like it's pressed with craft glitter. It's very sandy feeling. And even though it can give a pretty effect, um, it's, it's not the nicest bronze shimmer that I own. So what I said about this palette in my notes is that you need to set your base 
uh, quite well otherwise the mats apply very patchy but then at the same time you need to have a sticky base for the shimmers to stick to the eye and not just sort of like rain down your face. I said the bronze glitter is very gritty almost feels like sand. The other glitters look pretty chunky and pretty cheap. The mattes are overall very dark and too dark for my daily look. These are more of a smoky effect for me. Uh, so it's more of a like a nighttime palette. So I said that I wasn't massively impressed with the overall looks I created. And um, if someone had told me that I was using ColourPop eyeshadows, I wouldn't be that surprised in terms of how they apply. And I concluded that the only eyeshadow I really want from this palette is the red. Um, like I said, I did do a look using the red and I think it does add a nice element. Um, I do also quite like this rose gold shimmer, but it's not something necessary in my collection. So when I initially tested this palette, I concluded that I'm not gonna keep a palette for one maybe two eyeshadows. It's just not gonna happen. It's too much wasted space. And it shows it's not a very successful palette if I just want one or two out of 10 shades. Before I talk about the other large palettes, I wanna say that that pattern is pretty consistent. I don't like all the shades. They're sort of standard formula. The shimmers are kind of bland. The mattes are kind of patchy. They're not the right shades for me, but there are some nice sort of special shades that ideally I'd wanna keep. Um, so what I decided to do was have a look and do a bit of research online at how to depot these. Now, like I said, these are stuck in. So these are not um, pans that you can just pop out and change around. If you do want to depot these, it does take a bit of effort and technique and you can risk breaking them. Um, but I think I'm going to give that a go. So what I'm thinking of doing after I film this is try to take out the special eyeshadows, make one 10 pan palette with special eyeshadows, and then maybe make one six pan palette of some of the neutrals that I like. We'll see. We'll see how well I can depot them and we'll see how I go with that. So I can't tell you what the outcome's gonna be yet, but I really don't care if I destroy these because I'm so fed up with them, because I think they're so overpriced and they've been taking up too much room in my makeup collection for far too long. And I realistically, I'm only keeping them for like one or two shades. Um, if I destroy them, it is what it is. But the next video that I'm gonna do is me depotting these and making my own custom Pat McGrath palettes. So before I do destroy the palettes, um, let's talk about the other two 10 pan palettes I have. Uh, I've got this one here, which I've got to check the name because they don't have them written on the packaging, which is annoying. This is the Mothership 2 Sublime palette. So the bronze seduction I was talking about is the Mothership 5. All right, so I had similar issues with this palette. Um, I said that these shades are too dark for me or sort of too dull. This one here is like, just like a really dull shit shade. Like what the hell is that? Let's build it up. It's just, they're not, that's a shimmer. That's horrible. Um, so these, I don't, they're not special enough for me to want to reach for. Uh, when it comes to the special four, I only like this shade here, which is essentially like Mac Stylishly Merry. It's a shimmery pink that has a gold shift to it. It's a really beautiful um, sort of topper sparkly shade. I did do a look with it. Um, I think I applied that all over the base into the crease and then just that tapped all over it and it was a really pretty effect. Um, so I really like this shade. I do have it in Stylishly Merry, but again, um, I'm more than happy to keep two of them. So that's pretty much the only shade I really want to save. The gold next to it is quite nice, but it's very, very chunky. It's just just not a very refined, um, elegant looking gold. It looks like chunks on your eye. Um, this white to pink shade is hideous. Um, it's fucking bad, man. So it's supposed to be a shimmer and it's supposed to be like a white that shifts pink, but it actually just looks like, it looks so dull. Like there's very little shine to it. Like look at all the sparkle that I've had from the last palette. It is so dull that all it really does is add chunkiness. There you go. All it does is add a chunky effect to your lids. It's not shiny enough to look glittery. Look how it looks compared to that sort of stylishly merry shade. It looks like chunky chalk. So this 
is one of those disappointing shades. This one is a really beautiful shade. The green looks gorgeous. It's that same uh, formula as that red from the last palette, but the problem with it is it's got a blackened base. So even though it looks gorgeous and that is stunning, um, when you do swatch it, it actually has a blackened base and it makes all the looks look quite black. So it does make everything look quite smoky. If it was just that shimmery green, I'd be like, that is gorgeous. But the fact that it creates a smoky eye and you almost have to apply it with like a gray or a black blend it out to really make it work. It's not something, again, I have to keep. If I can save it and I have a spot for it in my custom palette, I will keep it. But realistically, the only shade I want to salvage from this palette is that one there. And I thought also, like I'm actually not wearing this palette on my eye today. That's how much I don't care about it. I am wearing one of the new Kaleidos quads just with brown eyeshadow. I feel like these behave way better than Pat McGrath. But what I wanted to do was just show you quality comparison. This is the gray palette. So I've got a matte black here. I thought I'd swatch it compared to Pat McGrath matte black. All right, they're both here. I've got Kaleidos there, Pat McGrath there. So we've got Kaleidos here, which is a gorgeous black that is gorgeous, and Pat McGrath. Why do people rave about Pat McGrath quality? It just confuses me. So that is why, and there's gonna be people that are still very offended that I am bagging out their favorite brand of eyeshadow. I don't get why people rave about the Pat McGrath quality, just personally. All right, on to this one, which is the Mothership 2 Subliminal Palette. Um, so again, same things, quality around this area, pretty average at best. I did say in my notes that all of the special shades do actually perform nicely, so they're not chunky, they're not lackluster, they are nice and smooth. These are that sort of beautiful, uh, metallic uh, gel -a sort of feel to them. One is this sort of light shimmery gold, one is this beautiful blue. Uh, they're shades I wouldn't use too often but they are very nice and they do perform quite nicely. So there you go, yeah, that's pretty. These two shades are sort of color shifty ones. So that one is like blue to pinky purple, as you can see. I did do a look where I just used this all over the lid um, and it's pretty standard sort of duochrome shimmer. You see these fairly regularly. They're not super uncommon. I think Jeffree Star had a highlighter that looked exactly like this. Um, and then this one is a white to blue. Again, not something that I need to <laughs> reach for too often, but it does perform quite nicely. And again, it's not super unique. You can see a lot of blue highlighters like this. So none of these are anything that I really need in my life. Uh, they're not colors I use on a daily basis, but they all they are all pretty and they, they apply quite nicely. What I did like about this palette is that there is a matte that is sort of a crease color that I'd use on a daily basis. So instead of all being smoky and all being quite dark, this one is uh, something that I would reach for, but the quality is okay. Again, these sort of shimmers are just, I found, find these shimmers to be quite muddy. Even though they are different colors, they look really boring and they all blend together. I found, uh, especially the next few palettes, uh, the smaller palettes, when I was sort of using them, they just all blend together into sort of one satin average, browny muddy effect and they just I don't think they really held their color distinctly they just sort of muddied together a lot so I didn't love this section in terms of quality as well so I was saying that these aren't super unique uh, I do want to mention my Cleona palette they have beautiful multi-chromes and I have a few that are quite similar and that are a lot better. So on my pointer finger I've got Pat McGrath and then these ones are Cleona so I just thought I'd show some comparisons. So Pat McGrath it's fine. Cleona is probably more shiny and sparkly. Similar color story is another one. It's a little bit more blue and intense. Nicer. That one's gorgeous. And then one down here, which is a little bit more silvery purple, but you can see, and I'll zoom in. So you can possibly even see that compared to these, the Pat McGrath one here is probably the least special out of the four. So are the special shades that special? I don't think so. 
When it came to these smaller palettes, these were frustrating because these are everyday color stories for me. So this is a cooler tone palette. This is the Platinum Bronze and that looks like something that I could wear on a daily basis. But again, it is all very flat. It is all muddy. You apply one or two shades and they just blend together to look muddy. Um, they're not very interesting and they're quite frustrating. I also want to say that I just... When I see this in the corner of my eye, I think of this and I don't like it. I just think it looks creepy um, and I just I just don't like it. This next one is a Bronze Ambition. I thought it was going to be one that I use regularly, but again, it is just one note. It's warm toned browns and no matter what you use, it all sort of looks the same on the eye and they're not that refined. They're not that flattering. They just kind of they're just kind of boring. The Bronze Temptation is probably my most used one and the one that I'll save most shades from. Um, so there are some nice shades in here. There's a dark brown, which is standard. This one here is like a cranberry shade, but it does have a duochrome to it. So uh, it's very, very slight duochrome. So if I hold it up like that, it looks cranberry. If I hold it up in the mirror, it looks gold. Um, but I do want to say, even though I've worn this quite a few times and it's one of my most used shades from this palette. I do want to say that the duochrome isn't super noticeable. Like you can see it's a little bit gold, um, but it mainly just looks like a warm cranberry on the eye. And again, if I want to compare it to some Cleona shades, um, it is very lackluster compared to the Cleona ones, which have much more of a color shift. This shade here is sort of like a gold with um, a really warm sort of base to it. So it's almost a green gold. Uh, there you go. And when you do blend it out, it's almost got a red base. So it's a bit of a unique color. And I don't think I've got that in my collection. Um, I quite like the gold. But the red base just always makes it look quite orange. And even though I have used it quite a lot, I actually figured out this month that I prefer this shade down here as my daily sort of all over look. This is a lot more sheer, but it's very, very pretty. And with paired with this sort of uh, warm toned matte, that's a beautiful duo. I will, I will definitely try to keep that. If I had just like a little duo sized... Um, magnetic palette or something that I can pop these in. I would just keep this as a duo because even though they are very dull and boring, I will have a photo on the screen of me wearing it. And it's just a really easy, flattering um, sort of champagne look. I often find that champagnes can either be very gold leaning, they can be very light and frosty leaning. Whereas this one is bright, so it brightens up the eyes but it doesn't look frosty. It's really pretty. So I really liked that shade. I didn't use the green uh, when I was testing this out, but I have used it before. It is quite a nice green, but I have to say that I like the black and green in the other palette more. So this is the one in the little palette that I just showed you. And this is that blackened one with that gel -A formula. So if I'm going to keep one, it's going to be the brighter green because it's just a bit nicer. This is quite dull. So after 16 days of trying these, I just haven't been impressed with the color stories. I haven't liked any one palette. I haven't been like, oh yes, I'm so glad I'm using these. I've just been a little bit frustrated with them. And yes, there are some looks that I that I came out with that I liked the finished result of, but not enough to keep the palette for just one shade. So now I'm going to go off. I'm going to depot these. I'm going to endeavor to make one palette of special shades. So 10 special shades I'm going to keep. And I might keep one palette, probably uh, this one, because I, firstly, it doesn't look like a creepy thing staring at me. It's a little bit more subtle. Um, so I like this packaging more. But also, I definitely want to preserve these two shades. But what I might try to do is depot some of these shades here and pop in some neutral shades from other palettes. So I might have a basic neutral six pan palette. And then I'll have a big ten pan special palette by the end of this. That's my plan. Wish me luck. But in terms of how many palettes I'm keeping and how many I'm getting rid of, if I do successfully make these two, I'm saying I'm keeping two palettes out of six. If I butcher it and I, I don't get to keep any, I'm getting rid of all six. All right, off I go with my hairdryer and tweezers and I'll see you in the next one.